All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, we started discussing the A to Z of export business financing yesterday. And the first session we had yesterday, the discussion was on application. Um, basically, we focus on what should characterize your application. And that if you are applying for export business financing in Nigeria, what would the bank be looking at? What should you put inside to be able to ensure that at the end of the day, you are able to ensure that the bank is interested in funding your transaction? And we'll continue from there today. This morning, we'll be talking about character and capacity of buyers. Character and capacity of buyers. It's extremely important we understand the fact that when a bank is funding you in export business, they're not just looking at you. Even if they trust you and they believe you are a good person, you have what it takes to do the business, they're also looking at the buyers in question. What is the character and the capacity of the buyer in question? One of the major concerns of a financier in taking a financing decision is the security of payment. Having taken care of all risk prior to shipment, the next concern is, will payment be made for the good ship in full and on time? Mubarak, Macro, thank you very much for joining. Will payment be made in full? Um, will payment be made for the shipment made in full and on time? Now, the word in full is very important because sometimes you do shipment and payment will be made, but sometimes the payment will not be made in full. And some buyer will hide under the guise of different reasons why they will not pay in full. And this often happens for commodities. And this also re-emphasizing all I've been talking about of the need for us to look beyond commodity and begin to focus on finished product as we push the desire to export out of Nigeria. So are you going to demonstrate to the bank that this particular buyer has the capacity to pay and that he will pay in full and he will pay on time and in time? This is where the character and capacity of the buyer become very important. This is particularly of great concern if the payment method is due for collection on open account. So payment method, if payment method is not right, it becomes very difficult. If the payment method is not right, it becomes very difficult for you to be able to get a bank to even believe in the character and capacity of the buyer because now the payment method being used <laughs> is, is going to leave the bank at risk. Why? Because that payment method is unsecured. That payment method is unsecured. The character is the willingness to pay and the capacity is the cash flow or ability to pay. So a bank is looking at willingness to pay and the ability to pay. In export, the bank will look at willingness to pay on the part of the exporter and the ability to pay on the part of the exporter. The bank also should look at willingness to pay on the part of the buyers abroad and the ability to pay on the part of the buyers abroad. So willingness to pay and ability to pay. Willingness to pay and ability to pay. These are very, very important, and it's called the character and the capacity. You know, sometimes some customers are willing to pay, they don't have ability to pay. Sometimes some customers are, have ability to pay, but they are not willing to pay. Sometimes some customers do not have willingness and do not have ability to pay. And then you have the best customer, the one that have willingness, and at the same time have ability to pay. The one that have willingness and at the same time have ability to pay. Those are the kind of customer a typical banker is interested in. Because they are willing to pay, they also have ability to pay. These two traits of buyers have been shown in loan application, has been shown in the loan application in order to give, sorry, has to be shown rather in loan application in order to give the financier the comfort needed to approve facility. So an exporter must show in his write-ups, in his proposal to the bank, he must show the willingness and ability to pay. The willingness to pay on the part of the bank, the willingness of the part of the, of the buyer, and the ability for the buyer to pay also. Those, all that must be shown in the request. 
If they are not shown in the request, it becomes difficult for the bank to believe whatever it is that you are trying to say or sell to the bank. The character of the buyer can be demonstrated through strict adherence to the period of payment in the previous transaction. And this should be backed up by documents. So if you say the buyer has character, the buyer has uh, character, you are not going to say it by mouth. You are going to demonstrate it in the strict adherence to payment by the transaction that you have done with that buyer previously. So when you show to the bank the evidence of the buyer paying on time and in time through the document that shows, for example, your last shipment says payment will be made 30 days after the bill of lading date. Payment will be made 30 days after the bill of lading date. That is what is on your contract for your previous shipment. You now presented the bill of lading of a previous shipment to the bank. You presented the account statement of your previous shipment to the bank. The bill of lading of a previous shipment shows that the shipment was done November 1st, 2008. 18 rather. And the account statement that you gave the bank showing evidence of payment shows that payment was made on December 15, 2018. If it's going to be 30 days after shipment, October 1, 2018, that's the date of shipment, October 1, 2018, but payment was received December 15, 2018. If you present that to the bank, you can't tell the bank that the, the guy, the buyer, has character, that his word is his bound, and that he has the character to pay, the willingness to pay. Why? You agree 30 days in your agreement. It shows shipment was done October 1, but payment came in not 30 days after, but plus 45 days after. That's 75 days after. So you have extra delay of 45 days. It's to be tough. Because when you are going to demonstrate to the buyer and to the bank or whoever is financing that the buyer have the character to pay, remember we are looking at character and capacity of the buyer as a critical element in export business financing. And I'm saying that if you want the bank to look at this transaction, you need to demonstrate to the bank that the buyer have character and capacity to pay. After you as an exporter have demonstrated to the bank your own character and ability to be. You first demonstrate to the bank your character. After you've demonstrated to the bank your character, then the guy in question, the buyer in question, must you must demonstrate his character also and capacity to be. And you're not going to demonstrate it by mouth, by just writing. It's going to be shown evident, documentary evidence. Documentary evidence to show that he's able to pay as at when due. He's able to pay as at the time he received the document. So the character of the buyer can be demonstrated to the bank or to a financier through strict adherence to the period of payment on the transaction, on the previous transaction. And this should be backed up by your export contract. This should be backed up by your bill of lading. This should be backed up by the invoice. This should be backed up by the account statement. Number one, the export contract shows the terms of payment. The export contract shows the terms of payment. Payment will be made 30 days after shipment. Number two, the bill of lading shows the bill of lading shows the date of shipment. The bill of lading shows the date of shipment. The bill of lading shows the date of shipment. Number three, the invoice shows the amount to be paid. The invoice shows the amount to be paid. The invoice shows the amount to be paid. Number four, the account statement shows the date of payment. The account statement shows the date of payment. So what is this saying telling you clearly? This is clearly telling you that number one, if you are going to demonstrate to the financier, the bank, the investment company, that the buyer has character to pay, then you are going to show these four documents. The agreement that shows when payments should be made, the evidence of when shipment was done, the invoice that shows the amount that has to be paid, and the account statement that shows when payment was made. 
So if you are showing all this to the bank, you can be very, very sure. You can be very, very, very sure that the bank can easily examine the document and be sure that you are not just saying it in mouth. So sorry, there was a break in the connection. Um, I was talking about character and competence. Sorry, character and um, capacity. Character and capacity. Character and capacity. And I was talking about the fact that documents are extremely critical. Documents are extremely critical for you um, to be able to present a bankable proposal to the bank. And we highlighted the export contract, we highlighted the bill of lading, we highlighted the invoice, and we highlighted the account statement. And these three documents show the payment terms, the date of shipment, the amount expected to be paid, and when payment was made. The amount expected to be paid and when payment was made. The amount expected to be paid and when uh, payment eventually was made. The capacity is the ability to pay upon shipment. This can be demonstrated through financial statement of the buyer. The financial statement of the buyer. Where this is not available, the following might suffice. The data that shows the annual volume of the item being procured by the buyer. The sales volume of the buyer the market share of the buyer, and the market size where the buyer operates. If possible, the rating of the company by any of the reputable rating agencies can be provided to help the bank speed up the loan processing and also make an informed export financing decision. And also make an informed export financing decision. So remember, you are demonstrating to the financier, the bank, the capacity of your buyer to pay and the character of your buyer in payment. You are demonstrating to the financier, the bank, the capacity of your buyer to pay and the character of your buyer in payment. These are very, very critical element. Very, very critical element. Very, very critical element. It's going to give... Cons I mean, um, 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 comfort to the buyer. And we said, for capacity, remember, character is the willingness to pay. And capacity is the ability to pay. Character is the willingness to pay. And the uh, capacity is the ability to pay. And we talk about the willingness to pay demonstrated with documents on your previous transaction. The documents on your previous transaction, the documents on your previous transaction. And I mentioned the document that you need to provide the bank, export contract, which shows payment terms, when payment is to be made, bill of lading, which shows the date of shipment, invoice, which shows the amount to be paid, and the, um, the account statement, which shows the amount that was paid and the date of payment. It shows the amount that was paid and the date of payment. And that if the agreement was payment should be made in 30 days, and within 30 days or slightly more than 30 days, maybe 3-4 days above 30 days, payment was made maximum 5 days after payment was made. And that's assuming that when payment was made, it took 3 days for you to receive it and hit your account. Payment was made, then you have, you have demonstrated that, look, this person has character in payment. And that has shown over time, not just in one transaction, probably in 2 or 3 transactions. But the issue now is capacity to pay, which might require you providing financial statements. Not the account statement, financial statements. Now, if that is not possible, you might need to provide the volume. What is the volume this buyer is paying? A third-party document showing the capacity of that company. How much do they buy every year? Or what is the volume of their sales from the raw material you're supplying or from the product you're supplying? What is the volume of their sales every year? Or what is their market share? What is their market share in the market where they operate? And the size of the market where they operate? If possible, can you provide any rating 
of this company by rating agencies, reputable rating agencies. If you can back up your request with all this, you are on your way. You are very much on your way to securing a finance for your transaction. Remember, we are discussing A to Z of export business financing, and we are looking at it from the perspective of exporter, exporter who needs financing, investor who is financing an exporter, and the bank willing to render financing, give financing facility to an exporter. And this is very important because the challenge for a lot of businesses in Nigeria is that they say, look, banks don't give loans. But I can tell you that banks give loans. Only they give loans to people who demonstrate they don't need the loan. They give loans to people who demonstrate they know what they are doing. They give loans to people who have shown and demonstrated that they can reduce their risk. I think the major challenge for a lot of SME in Nigeria, especially SME that have what it takes to pay back that loan, is being able to package the request in such a way that demonstrated to the financier that this is a serious and a credible organization. So at the objective of this thing, this import export platform that we have on Facebook Live every morning by 8 a.m. and every evening by 6 p.m. is to demonstrate to audience, people who will watch the video later, people who will watch it live, that these are the things you need to do to convince the bank that you are credible enough to get that facility. And you know why we are doing this for free online? If we are, we as Street Impact Trade Academy are very much committed to growing trade in Nigeria and Africa. And three things we do. We use trade education, trade support services, and actual trade execution. And we discover that trade education is extremely important if financing is going to happen. Because it's one thing for an, a, a, a small-scale business to be able to actually do its business well, and it's been doing it well for maybe the last five years. But that business has remained on a level. It has not been able to scale and grow because it has not been able to raise financing. Despite all he's doing, he's not able to show the bank that, look, this is my capacity. This is my credibility. This is what I can do. Why? Because he's not been keeping his record very well. So from what I discussed this morning, what this is saying is that you need to keep your record of your export contract. You need to keep the record of your bill of lading. You need to keep the record of your invoices. And you need to keep the record of your account statements. These records are very important. When you are placing that request to the bank, these are the documents you have to attach as supporting documents. When you attach it as supporting document, you are telling the bank that I am credible. I can be trusted. If you give me this loan, this is what I'm going to use it for. This is what I've done for many years. This is the evidence of the value we can add to your business. This is the evidence of the value we can add to your business. This is the evidence of the value we can add to your business. As an exporter, you can finance us. That's what you're telling the bank. Remember, the bank is in the business of giving out money to make money. So if they don't give out that money, they will not be able to make money. So always remember that they want to give out the loan, but they don't want to lose the money of their depositor. Like I said, I'm not holding brief for bank. I agree completely that a number of banks in Nigeria have huge knowledge gap in financing the export. And I'll be talking about some of them in the course of this conversation. Like I said, this thing might get to part 10 or even more because of the way we'll be taking it in bits every day. But what is important is that the banker needs to acquire knowledge. I posted something on, on, the, on, on my timeline on Facebook this morning, and it's the book, our book on A to Z of export business financing, actually. There's a book I wrote on A to Z of export business financing, designed for exporters, designed for investors in export business, and designed for financiers, the commercial banks, the investment bankers, and different financiers. And the whole idea is to let them realize, the whole idea is to let them realize that, look, we need to finance exports, and we can't finance exports. 
You know, recently I was in a session with some bankers, top management staff of some bankers, of some bank, and we're having a conversation. And from what I can see, they were talking about their tale of woes of the export business they finance that have issues. From all they could say, they are seeing, and these are, I mean, top most management of banks. All I could see in that conversation is that a number of them did not understand what exactly they need to be looking out for. So that at the end of the day, the rate of losses of their financing of export extended to SME can be significantly reduced. You know, when you are in a dark room, there is, and there is something in the corner of that room you need to go and pick up, and you don't know, you don't know. You know, my colleague have just posted right there um, on Jumia, A to Z of export business financing. For those that want to buy, you can actually buy it on Jumia. You can place your request right there on Jumia. And then, of course, you'll be able to order for it right there on Jumia. That's the A to Z of export business financing. And you know what? Because the room I have just entered is dark, and I need to pick up something there. If I begin to move, I will stumble. I will hit my leg on the chair, on the bed, on the table in the room. But if there is light in the room, I will walk between the aisles, go to the corner where the stuff is, pick up the stuff, and go out. That's exactly the way financing is. For a number of bankers, they don't know, they can't envisage what could go wrong. They don't know what they should be asking the exporters to be able to ensure that they even show if the exporter can perform. So they begin to ask for different things, personal guarantee, collateral, uh, 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 collateral, um, the collateral for the facility, so many things they're asking for. Some of those things they're asking for can be avoided and that can increase the number of people they can give their facility and they can still reduce their, their exposure. You know, recently I was in a presentation made by one of the fintech in Nigeria. And this fintech in Nigeria was telling banker, I have been funding SMEs and my MPL is less than 1% or 2%. I have been funding SMEs, small amino scale enterprise that Nigerian bankers are running away from. I have been funding SMEs. This SME that I have been funding, I have less than 1% non-performing loan. Non-performing loan is the loan that go bad, loan that people are not paying back. If a fintech company can come into Nigeria and give that loan, that has to tell banks that a lot of SMEs can be funded without and they will pay back with very low MPL. The, what has happened is that this uh, fintech have been able to know what they need to do to reduce their risk and exposure. And a number of microfinance banks also have been able to do that. They've been able to achieve that. Very low MPL compared to commercial banks. For me, this is a challenge to commercial banks. That the real challenge in the commercial bank environment is knowledge of how to be able to drive this export business. And that's why it's extremely important that either you train yourself as a banker or the bank train their staff to be able to ensure this knowledge gap is completely reduced so that we can effectively fund export business in Africa. Because if we don't fund export business, we are going nowhere. If we don't fund export business, we are going nowhere. We must fund export business to grow this economy. We cannot grow this economy by trading with ourselves. We must trade with other economy. To trade with other economy, we must scale. We, we kind of do cover cover business. We have to do large volume. To do large volume, we must get financing from the bank. For the bank to finance, the bank must be sure the money will come back. So on the part of the SMEs, and on the part of banks, we both need knowledge. And that's what 3 team Press is trying to do. Making that knowledge available through training of the banks in their offices. Making that knowledge available as much as possible. So that at the end of the day, everyone, both the bankers and the exporters, can have a very good handshake as far as export business financing is concerned. I'm running off now. I want to thank everyone that joined today, this morning. Mubarak. Uh, Ashegun, Adewale, Miki Ogbaisi, 
Olarewaju Philip, Peter Omeike, Ikeshuku Mogwa, Raf Abiodu, Caleb Afuakwe, all that joined this morning, and Mr. Abraham Shagbohan. Thank you very much for joining. I'm hoping we'll meet again in the evening by 6 p.m. Still discussing the part three of A to Z of Export Business Financing in Nigeria. Have a great day at work. Bye for now.